All right, folks. So uh, people are trickling in here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you may be in the world today. We are having folks uh, introducing themselves in the chat. If you'd like to participate, go ahead and share where you're joining in from today. We got folks from all over the world, from RSC Latin America to North Carolina to Oregon. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome. So today, um, our topic is how to use the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. And so as you all know, today is part two of our two-part series on the COONIs. For our facilitators today, my name is Ella Fowler. I am CORE's Research and Learning Officer. I have been with um, CORE since August of 2019. Uh, and during that time, I have supported the revisions of the cultural orientation objectives and indicators as a member of the COONI task force and supported the rollout um, of the COONIs um, and the creation of the revised or the creation of the new materials um, that you all are going to hear about today and you heard about last week. I'm joined today on the call by my colleagues Amy Franz and Two Phillips. They've turned their cameras on and they're giving you a wave. Uh, Amy is uh, going to be managing things in the back end for us, so she's going to be sharing things in the chat and links. Um, she's also our tech guru, so if you're having any issues with your sound or trouble navigating the things, go ahead and message Amy directly, and she's there to help you. Two's also going to be helping us manage the Q&A feature today and launching some polls, so a big thanks to both of them for their support um, in making this webinar happen. I'm seeing some more folks are, are introducing themselves in the chat. We got Nathan Walker, who is a volunteer and co-sponsor manager down there in Tennessee in Chattanooga. I love to say Chattanooga. We got uh, Mashid, who's calling in from Sacramento. Good to see you again, Mashid. Um, Giovanni is here. Nice to see you, Giovanni. So fantastic. Great to see you all. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. So today's objectives, um, as I mentioned, this is part two in a two-part series on the COONIs. Last week, we really talked about um, what are the cultural orientation objectives and indicators, and how did the CO task force go about revising the COONIs? And um, today, we're really going to take and build upon what we learned last week and talk about the steps to incorporate the COONIs into cultural orientation. We are gonna draft an action plan to revise the COONIs. So in a in your webinar, or in your webinar, um, prior to this webinar, we sent an email. And in that email, there was an action plan for you to have available today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit more about that later on, um, but we do hope that you will have some customized steps to apply the COONIs in your work. And then we really hope to share uh, core resources and upcoming learning opportunities to support you in navigating the COONIs. I really want to stress, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some water. I really want to stress that there's a lot to get through today, and we have learners and CO providers on the call from a variety of backgrounds and locations. And I'm going to be managing my time um, and trying to pace through this webinar in an effective manner. And as such, we might not be able to get through everything today. So I do want to stress that anything we do not get to, we will share out and follow up resources. So we will be sending out both webinar recordings as well as resources from this webinar by the end of this week. And that will include any follow up to any information we are not able to cover today. I also really want to stress that our webinar today is interactive. Um, we're going to be using the QA feature to ask questions, use the chat feature to engage, and the poll feature to test your knowledge. So I do just want everyone to take a moment and close out of their Microsoft Outlook, close out of your Teams, close out of your Slack, whatever you use to communicate with your colleagues, go ahead and put it on Do Not Disturb and give me your full attention for the next 60 minutes, um, as well, uh, give me your full attention for the next 60 minutes. We also have closed captioning enabled for this webinar. So if you would like to turn that on, you can do so at the bottom of your screen. So last week in uh, part one of our webinar, we talked about and reviewed the revised COONI topics and discussed how the revisions made um, to the COONI strengthened CO programming, as well as the cultural orientation continuum. There are now, there are 12 topics in overseas cultural orientation and 15 topics in domestic cultural orientation. 
The ONIs have been revised to be more consistent, measurable, and realistic to cover in CO. Overseas CO may be one session, yet domestically CO continues, and we all together deliver cultural orientation in alignment with the CO ONIs. We also learned about recommendations for effective CO delivery. So I want us all to take a moment and share in the chat, what is one recommendation for effective CO delivery that we learned about last week? And I won't mess up and annotate on the screen this time. No worries, Amy. No worries. So during our conversation, our training last week, we talked a lot about the CO continuum and how the CO ONI task force um, strengthened that continuum uh, by using recommendations for CO delivery. And we talked about a few of those recommendations. One of them included being repetitious and iterative in um, our CO programming. What were some other recommendations you all remember? Eduardo, I do see that your hand is raised. I think that might be an error, um, but do let us know. I will, I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hand. All right, Justin says, the use of visuals for clients to match, face-to-face -face interactive CO, good listening, consistent messaging from RA through volunteers and mentors. Absolutely, so Justin, you say on um, the use of visuals for clients, that's definitely, that's taking a student-centered approach. And we did talk about that last week, is, is recognizing that CO is not a one-size-fits-all um, and that we do need to uh, take a student-centered approach and put our refugees at the center of their learning. Um, Kalasi, yes, good listening skills. That's definitely on the student-centered learning. Trevor, consistent messaging. Yep, so the repetition and using the CO ONIs to be repetitious. Molly says staff, volunteers, community partners, all having the same messaging helps clients. Yes, so doing that repetitious messaging throughout the CO continuum, but also leveraging not only um, those who uh, work and live in our communities, but also those that we work with to help have consistent messaging. Um, absolutely, great. Good job, guys, you got them all. Logan said student-centeredness, perfect. So um, to summarize, uh, one, of the recommend one of the main recommendations for effective CO delivery is to be repetitious throughout the resettlement journey with a focus on knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And as we learned last week, the cultural orientation objectives and indicators outline the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that refugees need to acquire by the end of the reception and placement period or the end of cultural orientation in the United States. We also talked about how when we coordinate with other resettlement services, um, and we identify other opportunities to reinforce CO key, uh, key messaging, we can create and reinforce this continuum. And the ONIs really help us do that. Um, when we engage others like processing staff, community partners, sponsors, volunteers, um, and government agencies to repeat uh, key CO messaging, again, this reinforces and builds trust um, with our clients and reinforces the CO. And as you guys say, we wanna give participants control of their own learning um, by using digital technology like Settle In, um, and also asking participants what they want to learn about in CO. And this leads to the last one, which is taking a student-centered approach and recognizing the diversity of refugee populations and individuals, and that cultural orientation is not a one-size-fits-all approach. So this leads us to talking about what the CO ONIs do and what the cultural orientation providers do. And so we know from what we learned last week that the cultural orientation objectives and indicators really outline what refugees are expected to do or say by the end of cultural orientation. The CO ONIs are broad as they are to apply to any refugee who's resettling to the United States. So what the ONIs help you do is prioritize what to teach first before addressing other topics. We wanna to recognize that uh, refugees bring their own backgrounds and experiences to the process. And that's what CO providers do, which I'll talk about here in a second. The CO ONIs also help us manage expectations of both refugees and individuals working in resettlement. And what this means is by having the CO ONIs, we can say, this is what I'm required to cover um, in cultural orientation. I know there's other information you think is important. How can we work together um, to manage our expectations and deliver the information? And then for refugees, when you work overseas, you can use the ONIs to help manage expectations about when they'll learn specific information 
um, that might be important to them. And domestically, it can help you uh, just manage their expectations about where domestically they'll be able to learn information that is important to them. The OCO ONIs also allow for the development of universal and refugee facing resources, as well as CO provider facing resources. So as we learned about last week, because the CO ONIs are broad, it allows CORE to create resources like Settle In, as well as our CO provider resources to support you all in delivering cultural orientation. So what you do is you take this information and you tailor it to refugees that you are working with. You exist because the COO and ICE cannot be universally applied. Um, so you are here because you design um, a CO that prioritizes the topics that are outlined in the COO and ICE and what refugees are expected to do or say. We, uh, you're here to help incorporate concepts that place refugees at the center of their own learning um, and taking control of uh, the resettlement process. You're also here to identify where it's appropriate to customize key messages. So in our scenario last week between Luce and Donna, when, we're, when we were talking about public transportation, there is a need to, poten to, to, not potentially, there is the need to customize the CO message about what public transportation system you are gonna use and promote locally. Um, train others in resettlement on the importance of the COONIs and assess refugees' achievement of the COONIs. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to move our conversation to talking more about today's topic, which is how do we use the cultural orientation objectives and indicators um, in, in our work. So, uh, Sorry, before I do that, I just wanna to touch base a little bit more on the action plan. Um, so my apologies. Uh, Amy's already shared in the chat a link to the PDF as well as the Word version of the action plan. I do want you guys to have that open and available um, for you to add ideas into today. This morning's session, we weren't able to get to the reflection uh, uh, exercise at the end to work on the action plan. So I just wanna encourage you to have it available and typing in your notes. I also want to stress that we're all in different stages of the process of applying the COONIs, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Um, so some steps you might might not apply to you, and also depending on your role in cultural orientation, the steps may not apply to you. So feel free to update and edit the action plan in a way that works for you. Be sure to identify who else you need to engage or work with. There are some steps that are individual, and there are some steps that are going to require you um, to work with either your supervisor, your colleagues, um, staff members, or other individuals in resettlement. Now that I've covered that, now we're going to talk a little bit about um, what you all have done to apply the revised COONIs. So in our web re webinar pre-registration, we asked you all to share just some steps that you've already taken to update um, your CO to align with the revisions. And this is a summary of the results from both the morning and afternoon webinar, which had a about 370 or so registrants. So as you can see here, a good quarter of you have already started to apply the revised COONIs, um, with a good portion of you already reviewing the, the revisions of the COONIs, which is a, a very important step. So if that's something you haven't done, really encourage you to uh, write that step down for today. Um, and then as you can see, it trickles down to 9% um, of you not having taken any steps which is okay, that's why we are here today. Um, so don't worry. And the last thing here is that there's 22% of you who have said other. And so I would like to hear from those 22%, what are some other steps you've taken to apply the revised COONIs? And if you could go ahead and share that in the chat. So Cynthia, your questions about the cultural orientation assessment, I really appreciate those questions. Um, the CO working group is already aware that the assessment needs to be updated, but at this time we are in the early stages of looking at that. So I uh, really appreciate your comments um, happening over there in the Q&A feature, but would like to refocus our conversations on the COONIs and using those at this time um, versus talking about the CO assessment. But thank you for those questions. Um, it is noted on uh, wanting to help that we will keep that in mind. Um, all right. so. I don't see anybody sharing in the chat. What are some other steps that you have uh, done to apply the revised COONIs? 
There's about 22% of you who have done other things. All right, so Trevor, you've met with the ESL providers to update topics discussed in classes. Prioritize the most important topics. Absolutely. Can you unpack that a little bit more for me, um, Dara Luce? What do you mean by prioritize the most important topics? What does that look like for you and your agency and your team? Is that um, was that done based on knowledge you have of the populations you serve? I'd really like to hear more. And Kalasi, I really appreciate your question and I'm going to continue with my presentation. I believe we're gonna answer it and then loop back and make sure that you feel like it's been adequately answered for you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on here. Um, and I want us to unpack a little bit more of, the, of these um, actions that you guys have taken. And let me pause, I just saw some chats come in that I um, that you all were working on and I moved too quickly. Justin, you're in the midst of establishing a friends and mentors program that seeks to link volunteers with clients to teach them how to use local bus routes, help them acclimate. That is fantastic. Experiential learning came up in this morning's um, sessions too as actions that people have been begun to take and really getting refugees um, in their communities and learning with volunteers. So that's really, really awesome. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, Joanna, invite people who are referencing on the topics we're talking about in CO, so working with community partners, fantastic. So I want us to look at these three action items that are over here on the right in bold. And I wanna unpack these a little bit more because there's a lot that can actually happen under these specific actions. And so um, the three actions are access and update CO materials, draft a plan to apply the CO ONIs, and train staff on the COO and I's. And so I want to take, I want you guys to take a couple of minutes and just think through if you were somebody who selected this as an action you've taken, share more in the chat, what specific actions did you take? So let's be specific. How have you assessed and updated your CO materials? So some folks from this morning said that they've looked at all of the topics and they've gone through to make sure that language is consistent with what's in the COO and I's and that they're covering all of the um, COO and I's and the updates. Uh, for drafting a plan, someone talked about how they have a four-part plan in place over the next couple of months to look at um, applying, revising um, their curriculum around the, the new COO and I's. So go uh, take a moment and just think about um, what actions you've taken if you have done any of these and share those in the chat. So at RSC Latin America, you're still delivering virtual CO and you adapted topics to fit in one single session that takes four to five hours to be delivered. Great, thank you for sharing Giovanni. You've tried to include at least one relevant topic for each ONI. Um, so I think what you mean is that for each topic, you're trying to cover at least one objective. So Molly, you're starting to incorporate digital literacy um, in terms of your materials. And now you're starting to include other aspects of that topic. What does incorporate look like? Are you like assessing your topics and uh, other topics and identifying where you can add digital literacy in? How does that incorporation look like? What does that incorporation look like? Logan, you've updated and assessed uh, that you've looked at the new ONIs and compared your current materials. Fantastic. And bringing those up to date. Um, and you wanna do this before you update staff. That's a good plan, Logan. So it sounds like you already have kind of a, a plan in place um, to apply the ONIs, making sure that things are updated before you look to train other staff. Um, Justin, your current community orientation is entirely run by staff, but we're trying to get a rotating group of members that can come in to personally discuss what they do here. Fantastic, absolutely. So that's um, training staff on uh, the ONIs and that'll be a great touch point and opportunity to kind of talk about how you can engage everybody in the delivery of the ONIs. And so we'll talk about some resources that you can use, Justin. And I know Amy already shared with you the community sponsorship toolkit, but the whole office approach toolkit will also be helpful. Um, Mashid, you tried to update the topics and invite the knowledgeable presenters to provide the updated info. Fantastic, so working to identify um, community partners. Great. Well, in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and um, save this whiteboard and we will add uh, your other thoughts to it. 
um, in, in our follow up. But thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, I wanted to share so that folks could see what other folks have done and hopefully get some ideas. Um, so our next uh, uh, step is I want to acknowledge um, what are some challenges you are facing with using the revised COONIs? So go ahead and share in the chat. What are some challenges that you've been facing as you look to apply the revised COONIs? Molly, lack of time. Yeah, we heard that this morning too. That's always a major challenge is lack of time. How do I how do I cover all of these ONIs with everything else that's going on in resettlement with considerations for my learners, their backgrounds, their needs, um, and making sure that I answer all of their questions? I feel like time needs to be gigantic, so I put it on there really big. Perfect, Amy. I appreciate that. And we're getting a lot of I second that. Competing priorities for both staff and clients. Absolutely, Logan. It's really hard sometimes to prioritize CO effectively. Um, and so I, I appreciate you sharing that. Dara Roo says amount of new arrivals is large and lack of staff. Absolutely. The cognitive load on the learners. The amount of information and the time to deliver it. Yeah, Giselle, I hear you. Digital literacy of clients is a major challenge. Absolutely, it is. Um, we're, we're dealing with clients who um, maybe have never interacted with technology before. Um, for online CO sessions, participants' literacy levels and read-write activities, getting the presenters to update their presentations as they already have PowerPoints. Thank you for, for sharing that, Kishil. Um, so really reinforcing why it's important to align the materials with the updated CO ONIs. Um, clients being late. Yeah, how do we, the challenge of just engaging clients in CO, getting them to attend CO sessions. Absolutely. What are some other challenges you're facing? Hygiene can be culturally difficult to teach in mixed groups of men and women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Internet, internet connectivity. I hear you there, Giovanni, particularly for you at RSEs who are delivering in areas that it's difficult to get to or there's security concerns. Um, it's, often to have, it's often hard to have internet and you might be forced to do more telephonic CO, which is also can be another challenge. Joseph, you say interpretation. <clears throat> all right, so I wanna just thank, to, thank you all so much for sharing these, um, these challenges. The reason I wanna do all the share of these challenges is I, I wanted to take a moment and just acknowledge that we are all facing very similar challenges to, to cultural orientation delivery. And um, I hope today that working on your action plan, you'll be able to identify actions to address these challenges. I'm not gonna be able to give you the answers to all of these challenges today. Um, we have too many resources on CORE's websites and there are different ways to apply solutions and strategies to these challenges, which are gonna vary depending on local staffing, funding, and just the context that you're, that you're dealing with. But I do hope that I will be able to connect you with some resources and we can talk about ways that you can work to um, use the revised COONIs in your day-to-day -day work, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and save. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and acknowledge here that the Cultural Orientation Resource Exchange is a, um, is a technical advising unit for CO providers across the globe. And so a lot of you are commenting here about the challenges that you're facing in CO delivery are the amount of information that you have to cover, managing time, how to deal with um, learners and keep them engaged. And that's where CORE can help you. No matter your role in resettlement, our resources help you learn the skills that you all are talking about, like managing time, which can be managed by taking a student-centered approach and just recognizing that we are all in this together from overseas to domestic CO, working to deliver this information and that not one of us can deliver the information that everybody needs. So I want to take us to the CO Resource Exchange website here really quickly and talk about ways that you as a CO provider can build your knowledge, skills, and attitudes independently as an individual to be able to address some of the challenges that you've talked about today and work with others at your agency to share the knowledge and skills that you can learn. So Encore's website, when you come to our website, we do have a lot of resources. And let me pause here. Can you guys see my screen? Amy's giving me the thumbs up, getting some thumbs up from folks. Great, thank you. 
So when you come to the CO Resource Exchange website, <clears throat> the way that it's laid out is um, in this left to right manner from about to, to uh, research and evidence to contact. And the idea is, is that the more you gain in knowledge and skills in CO delivery, um, the more that you can learn by reading to the right. However, not all of us are introduced to CORE in that manner uh, because CORE strives to achieve the recommendations for effective CO delivery. We have resources that support any individual working in resettlement in delivering cultural orientation. So as we learned today, we have individuals who are working with community sponsors. We have individuals who are working with resettlement support center staff. And so we need to have resources that support all of you in, in delivering CO. So as individuals, I really wanna direct you to the learn section of our website. This is where you go to learn the skills to be able to deliver what we consider to be effective CO. Our online courses and webinars, a lot of you are talking about how do I manage time? How do I get learners engaged? How do I manage expectations? Well, here on our website, you can learn more about our online courses. These self-paced courses are anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes to complete on your own time. Our principles of teaching suite specifically gets into how can you use research and evidence behind working with adults and apply them to a refugee resettlement context? So how can we apply adult learning principles to manage time and CO delivery? How can a student-centered approach help us make sure that our learners are engaged while also achieving what's in the objectives and indicators? Some of you talked about cognitive load, which is great. That means that you already recognize that term. And if you are working to address this, then you're delivering effective CO. So just wanna throw that out there that this is where you can go to learn more. And then we also run virtual practicums on our learning platform, um, which is up here to the right. And here's where you can come to sign up uh, for our learning platform, as well as to log in. And if you are subscribed to our Core Connection newsletter and um, with your national agency as a CO provider, you can join us for virtual practicums that we have, where we talk about how to deliver effective cultural orientation. I also wanna direct your attention to our provider onboarding and our working with interpreters. These two pages can help you on uh, working with interpreters. So some of you noted that as a challenge. So I highly encourage you to check out those resources. And then our provider onboarding page is a great place to go to learn more about um, key uh, uh, concepts behind effective CO delivery and just be connected to uh, new resources. The other area I wanna direct you to to help develop your skills is our refugee resources tab and specifically our working with refugees page. Here's where you can go to learn more about um, service delivery approaches in working with refugees that apply to a variety of contexts, not just within cultural orientation. And then the last um, piece I want to direct you to as an individual is our promising practices and how to guide. So some of you already alluded this to this in your actions that you're working with guests from the community um, and that you're looking to um, deliver more interactive uh, and digital technology into your cultural orientation. So under research and evidence is where you can go to, to learn more. So those are some uh, ways that you can build your knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Um, I will go ahead and ask Amy to put a link to our Core Connection newsletter in the chat. And that's the best way to stay connected with us and engage to make sure that you're aware of new resources that are coming out of Core. So now we're gonna go into a practice in action, okay? And we're actually gonna really look at um, housing cultural orientation. And the reason I've decided to be specific is just to narrow our focus today, um, because there are a lot of resources that we can talk about when it comes to designing housing CO and when it comes to applying the CO ONIs. So as I'm talking about this and making it specific to housing, I do really wanna emphasize to you all um, that you should take your actions or anything you identify and apply them to a, a broader context or outside of housing CO if that is what is applicable to you. Now, as we've already talked about, um, CO is not a one size fits all approach, right? And CORE recommends that organizations create policies around CO delivery and flexible lesson plans and materials that allow providers to adapt cultural orientation as needed to their learners. We recommend that providers plan for each CO session that they deliver and what this planning looks like will be different for each of, uh, for each of you. So what our scenario is gonna look like today 
is uh, we are looking at the housing COO and I's, right? They have been revised. So this is a very real scenario. And you've been asked um, to update housing CO to be in line with the housing CO ONIs. What you know in this scenario is that much of what refugees are expected to do or say around housing remains similar to the previous CO ONIs. The revisions in the CO ONIs focus on how to improve housing objectives and indicators to be more consistent, measurable, and realistic. And the revised housing ONIs are to be used starting in fiscal year 2024. So this is our, our the scenario that we are all in right now. We're just focusing in and on the housing ONIs. So here's today's cast of characters. Um, I'm going to introduce four characters, and you're going to choose the character that closely uh, aligns with your role in CO delivery. So our first character is Martha. Martha is an overseas curriculum design officer, and Martha designs CO sessions. She supports training of providers, delivers CO trainings, and she's a supervisor. So if you meet any of this criteria and you're working in overseas CO, then Martha would be the character that uh, best aligns with you. So Giovanni, Martha would be somebody that you would select, for example, because you deliver overseas CO. Our second cast of character, or second cast of our second character is Abdul, and Abdul is a domestic case manager. Abdul co-designs CO sessions, or he might he might be in a situation where you design all the CO sessions, um, manages a refugee caseload, delivers CO sessions. So you should pick this character if you work on the domestic side and you are really delivering multiple um, CO sessions, you support the design and development of CO, you are really involved in CO on a day-to-day -day basis, you should also pick this if you are somebody who manages a refugee caseload but still delivers CO here or there or on occasion. Um, so that's Abdul. Our next character, and excuse me, I need a drink of water, <clears throat> is Casey. So Casey, in this scenario, because we're talking about housing CO, is a landlord, community partner, so you should pick this if you work in the community. You don't really you don't work at a um, resettlement agency, or you're not um, directly involved uh, with a national resettlement agency, um, and you partner with a local resettlement agency in your work. Then you should go ahead and pick Casey um, as your character. And then the last character that we have is Rowan, and Rowan is an individual working in resettlement. So you should really pick this if you work at an RA or an RSC, either paid or unpaid. So if maybe you're a volunteer with a local resettlement agency um, or a community sponsor that's working with a resettlement agency, then I would encourage you to pick individual working in resettlement. If you're somebody who partners with a resettlement agency to deliver CO like as a community partner, then you could pick this or you could pick Casey, you know, it kind of depends. Um, but again, this is just to help us organize and focus our information. So if you feel like you're split between multiple characters, that's okay. Um, just go ahead and pick one character that you feel best aligns with your role with cultural orientation. So what we're going to do is we're actually, I'm going to take a moment and I want you guys to think about who you're going to role play today. And we're going to launch a poll on your screen. And I want you all to go ahead and select the character um, that you're going to role play. I always feel like there should be Jeopardy theme music going. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Kalinga, for sharing that in the chat. All right, we're going to go ahead and give you another 10 seconds. About 60% of you have participated. So if you are off uh, just responding to those emails, I ask that you come back now and you go ahead and you complete the poll that you see on your screen. Thank you to the 38 of you who have done so. So go ahead and we'll close this poll too. Thank you. And we'll share the results. So it looks like about 15% of you are in the Martha role. So you're overseas. We have another 18 or 46% of you are in the domestic case manager role. We got a few Casey's on the call, that landlord and community partner, uh, welcome. And then we have uh, uh, 12 individuals working in resettlement. Um, so thank you guys so much. We're gonna stop sharing those results. And 
let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how we use the, the COO and I's um, in our work. So the what you have here on the screen are um, steps that CORE has identified on how to use the COO and I's. And what I've done is I have just focused them in on our scenario on housing. And these steps are very fluid, right? They're, um, you're going to be applying them throughout uh, the times that you are delivering cultural orientation. Excuse me, I'm lost in my session plan. Um, yes, you're going to use them uh, frequently throughout your time as a CO provider. So what we can prepare now and we can start thinking about the revised CO and you're going to continuously take these steps through, throughout the process. And we really do recommend that you plan for each CO session that you deliver. So you can take these steps now and then apply them again um, as you as we get closer to using the revised CO and I's. So the steps are review the housing CO and I's, design housing CO in alignment with the CO and I's, engage others in housing CO key messages, and assess refugee understanding of um, housing. Sorry, my screen's covering up housing objectives. Oh, I'm having a day, folks, of housing objectives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so these are the steps that uh, we take to, to apply and use the, the housing COO and ICE. So what I want you guys to do is, is I have this true or false question. We're going to launch another poll for you. And the true or false question is all of our characters play the same role in coordinating cultural orientation on the topic of housing. So our curriculum design officer say, plays the same role in coordinating CO on housing as um, our landlord and community partner does, and as our individual working and resettlement does. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that very much. Um, for those of you who don't know, Daryl and I wor worked closely together for two years, um, so he knows me very well. So thank you, Daryl. We're going to go ahead and give folks um, another 10 to 15 seconds to answer this, this true or false question. All of our characters play the same role in coordinating CO on the topic of housing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end the poll. We're going to share the results. So similar to this morning, we also had a, a similar a breakdown of about 26% of you say this is true, that all of you play the same role in coordinating CO on the topic of housing. And then 74% of you say it's false. So let's take a look. The answer is false. So our characters have different roles in CO. Our overseas curriculum design officer is responsible for actually designing cultural orientation and making sure it happens. Casey can choose whether or not they want to participate in reinforcing housing CO. But all of our characters can support the delivery of key message around housing in the US. And we learned from our conversation last week, it's really critical for them to do so because we create a CO continuum that really reinforces the recommendations for effective CO delivery. So while we all have different roles in CO, we can all support the delivery of key messages around housing in the US, and we all have resources that we can access to do so. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the resources available to review um, the housing CO ONIs. Whoops. So I'm going to go back to CORE's website. And as we learned uh, just a little bit ago, Whoops, pardon me, spotlight went away. Um, as we learned just a little bit ago, we have the menu here across the top. And as we learned last week, there's now a new web page <clears throat> for the culture orientation objectives and indicators. And on this web page, you can access basic information about the ONIs and that ONI web, uh, that video. So Kalasi, you asked me how many people in your group of 10 do you think I should be involved in, in the CO ONI process? I think every single individual that works in your group should see the CO ONI video, and they need to be aware of the role that the CO ONIs play in resettlement. Then, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about what other resources are available as well. But when we're talking about reviewing um, the, the PDFs of the overseas and domestic CO ONIs, what we mean here is, is that you really need to be reviewing both the overseas and the domestic CO ONIs. Do not limit yourself to just the domestic or just the overseas. 
when you are overseas, reviewing the domestic COO and I's helps you see what you should might be might prioritize or what you should be prioritizing overseas because the ONIs are written to be a continuum of messaging. So when you look at them side by side, you'll see here for our housing objectives that in the overseas uh, housing for C or overseas housing COONIs, you see here that this objective is not in domestic CO. And so as an overseas provider, you can say to yourself, that's a pretty important objective that we need to achieve before they reach the United States. And that while the indicator is still continued here, this objective is not. And so this is what we, we should, this is what we need to prioritize. And the rest of this information is helpful and will continue to build our house, right? And help us with our knowledge exchange, um, but that this is really important. And then also reviewing the domestic COONIs helps you as an overseas provider, manage refugees' expectations and help them put be at the center of their own learning because you cannot know all the answers around housing CO, but you can let clients know or refugees know or applicants know, oh, you're going to learn more about how to file an AR-11 when you are in domestic cultural orientation. And you can say that with certainty because it's in the ONIs. It is information that needs to be covered um, domestically in the United States. And then for overseas, it's really, or domestically, it's really important to also look at the overseas ONI so that you can understand how much information they are required to present and have a good understanding of what is covered overseas before they arrive in the United States. And then when you're, you're reviewing the domestic COONIs and looking at the topic of housing, you can begin to see and think about what other topics also touch upon housing? How might I interweave these objectives and indicators with other topics? How the COONIs are organized is by no means supposed to be how you are to deliver your CO programming. The task force and PRM organized the information this way because it was the easiest way to do so and to present it to you all. You can deliver objectives and indicators other under to other topics you can merge topics together and deliver the information in a way that makes most sense for you so when you review the ONIs that's something that you are you can start to think about um, uh, as part of the process So once you review the COO and I's for the housing and you have a good idea of what needs to be covered in um, uh, overseas and domestic CO, <clears throat> you can begin to design uh, cultural orientation um, on housing. And so this is where we want to begin to think about designing and engaging others in house, housing CO programming. And as I said before, um, how CO is delivered at your agency is going to be very different um, than how it's delivered at other agencies. Uh, a lot of us have uh, policies and guidelines um, from our national resettlement agencies, from our local resettlement agencies that require us to deliver cultural orientation in, in a certain way. So when we look at designing um, housing CO ONIs, um, it's really important um, to remember that you need to consider uh, what your local context is and um, apply these recommendations to design housing CO um, in a way that works for you. So what I mean by this is policies that govern how CO is delivered uh, just can be can vary. So I know some national RAs require you to deliver CO within 30 days. Some local um, agencies aren't allowed to deliver in-person CO because of COVID. Um, some resettlement support centers have to deliver telephonic CO just because of the context of what they're dealing with. And so we have to remember these as we are um, thinking about and designing CO programming. Um, and so agencies are really given autonomy in how CO uh, can be designed and, and delivered. And so I say this because, again, I'm going to be able to give you resources to help design and engage on CO, but I'm not going to be able to answer all of your, all of your questions today. So here's our some... Um, recommendations that CORE has when we're thinking about designing housing CO and using our characters. So the first is we need to determine roles and responsibilities with housing CO. And this is really our individuals working in resettlement. 
These are our leadership uh, folks who work at national resettlement agencies, who manage regions of the United States um, for uh, national resettlement agencies, who are local supervisors, who work at resettlement support centers. Your uh, team might all think that they're all an individual in resettlement and none of them are a case manager or a curriculum design officer and none of them need to be updating or assessing materials. They're just there to deliver CO. So it's really important that you make sure roles and responsibilities um, with housing CO programming and updates is clear. The next is to update um, and review the language in your CO material. So a lot of you have already started to do this and this is great. So the ONIs have been updated and have language um, and we've changed language to be more consistent. And so to continue that repetitious continuum, it's really important for you to take a look at your materials and make sure, am I using the same language? Have I customized the language um, to my local community and have I customized it in a way that still builds upon how it might've been introduced overseas? And then the next is to um, train appropriate staff on housing CO. So again, you know, here at CORE, we think any individual working in resettlement at minimum needs to see that CO ONI video and be aware that these ONIs exist. Um, and they can well, learn a little bit more about how they can learn more about the ONIs and the key messages behind them here in a moment. And then we want to engage others in working in resettlement. So some of you are already a community partner and you're already here today. Thank you so much for being here. You're already above the game because for a lot of our community partners, they need our case managers, individuals in resettlement and our curriculum design officers to engage them and elevate the importance of CO. So the fact that you're here is just already great. And you can work to apply a lot of what we're talking about um, in, in your CO and how you deliver CO. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you, what resources are available for you to design housing um, CO and engage others on housing CO. So I'm going to go back here um, to our, our web page. And um, <clears throat> doo -doo -doo. so as we know with housing CO, we uh, know that it needs to be uh, flexible. Um, and fit a variety of learners, everywhere from learners who are familiar with household appliances to learners um, who have never even seen those appliances before. So we need to be able to deliver CO to both of these types of learners um, and consider the factors that we talked about before, like time and mode of delivery and so on and so forth. Um, so here at CORE, we try to produce resources to help you design CO that meet a variety of needs, including remote um, and in-person CO delivery. So as uh, CO providers, um, one of the, the other things, excuse me, I forgot to mention something. In addition, <laughs> when you're reviewing the cultural orientation objectives and indicators, another uh, piece that you can also help you learn about the CO ONIs is our settle in resources. So all of CORE's working with refugee or, or newcomer facing resources are based on the CO ONIs. Um, so for those of you who are in the, uh, curriculum design role, or if you're in the case manager role, um, you can share our settle in resources with community partners because they are based on the CO ONIs. They can help you identify key messages about housing that you can start to use in your resources. So when we draft our refugee facing materials, we use the CO ONIs and what refugees are expected to do or say to draft these materials. So this can help you think through what type of information you might wanna say or reinforce in um, your CO sessions. And so then when you're designing CO sessions, um, you can come to our webpage and we have an activity bank that contains a variety of activities on CO topics. We've recently released safety as well as newcomer rights and responsibilities, but we have a housing um, activity bank page where you can come in and you can see a variety of topics that we have available uh, that support the housing CO ONIs. We do not anticipate that you're going to add every single one of these uh, activities into your session because some of these actually touch upon multiple objectives and indicators and may duplicate some object objectives and indicators, but it does allow you to see how you can cover these topics and how you can make them student-centered and ways to modify um, the uh, modifications and tips for different learners or different contexts. And you can also find activities that are available in person um, and or, or virtually. 
To answer the question on is settle in updated with the new um, ONIs. So what much of what refugees are expected to do or say remains similar to the previous ONIs, Logan, and we are working right now to get everything in alignment, but as much as possible, we tried to keep things as consistent as we possibly could so that we wouldn't have to do a major overhaul of our resources. But yes, we are going through and we are making sure that all of our resources are in alignment with, with the ONIs. So you're welcome, Logan. So in addition to our activity bank, another space that you can come to design CO that meets refugees needs is our About Refugees Populations page. So as we've been talking here, uh, CO cannot be a one size fits all uh, approach. How um, Afghans and the knowledge that they have about housing in the US is very different than um, the Congolese refugees that we work with and their knowledge of the, U of the US. So how we deliver cultural orientation to these groups or in these contexts is gonna look very different. And so here's where you can go to identify ways to think about that in your CO programming and to create programming that is flexible um, and to plan sessions that can allow you to meet the variety of learners' needs. Other things that are available for you in terms of resources are our curriculum and lesson plans. So we have supplemental lesson plans available, including digital technology and literacy supplemental lesson plan. Um, and then we even have a telephonics CO guidance and curriculum, which is very basic and can show you how to take a student-centered approach across all of our CO topics. It's not updated to be in alignment with the ONIs yet, but can give you an, a basic idea of, of what um, a CO curriculum might look like. So then I also want to share resources um, that have to do with engaging others on cultural orientation, because you might already be in a place where you've already explored our activity bank, you already are here, and you just want to know how can I engage others in CO delivery. And so the first um, resource I want to direct you to is under research and evidence and our whole office approach to cultural orientation. So for those of you who are individuals working in resettlement, and you don't feel like you have a case manager or a leader who is really taking lead on designing CO, you can look at and maybe advocate at your agency for um, taking a whole office approach to cultural orientation. And this uh, toolkit gives you activities that you can use with others at your agency um, to begin to talk about how you can take a whole office approach to cultural orientation delivery and what those customized key messages might look like. So you can avoid misinformation um, in your community. Another resource that Amy shared in the chat for you all earlier is this resources for community partners and sponsors. So for those of you who are working with uh, resources uh, or working with community partners, working with volunteers, working with sponsors, we have this uh, cultural orientation toolkit for community partners and sponsors. And this resource is also a really good resource to reference if you wanna look for ideas on CO design, like designing CO programming because it does kind of show um, where it very, what touch points you might be able to reinforce and use CORE's activity bank to support the ONIs. And so as a CO provider, this could give you an idea of how you at your agency might be able to utilize similar concepts to deliver cultural orientation. The last thing that I wanna share with you all is CORE's waiting room resources. So under here, under our refugee resources, we have the Working with Refugees page, which I showed you before. And on here, we have these waiting room resources. And as I said before, a major recommendation of CO delivery is giving, um, putting refugees at the center of their own learning and giving them access to digital technology. And Settle In is made for refugees. Um, it is made for refugees uh, with their needs in mind. And CORE prides ourselves on taking a user-centered approach and making sure um, that all of our resources are user-centered. And so it's really important for us to promote our Settle In resources to help achieve those recommendations for effective CO delivery. So here uh, under our waiting room resources, we have uh, palm cards and posters and flyers that help promote Settle In in a variety of different languages that you can hang up at your agencies, in your um, waiting room centers, uh, in whatever space that makes sense for you to help promote our Settle In resources. So that uh, covers a little bit about our um, resources to help you engage and design housing CO. Um, we are running out of time. And so I was gonna have you share an action for your that your character can take, but we're gonna skip this. And instead, I just wanna emphasize the last step, which is assess um, 
refugees understanding of CO. And as we talked about last week, all of us, regardless of where we are or what our character's role is, can um, assess refugees understanding towards the indicators and towards um, achieving the CO ONIs. And so when we talk about it, how it's important for all of us to know about the CO ONIs, this is what we mean, because when we all know about the ONIs, we can optimize these touch points. So when we talk about assessing understanding, we don't mean in terms of compliance and achieving the CO ass assessment. We more so mean in terms of creating a strong continuum that allows us to all work together to support um, support refugees. So I want um, us to go ahead and take a moment to reflect on your action plan. I know we only have two minutes here, um, but if you have that up, why don't you just take some time to think about your action plan? Um, what are some steps that you are going to take after this call? And if you're comfortable, you can go ahead and share um, your your steps in the chat box. If you also want to use this time to ask questions of core, you can do that. Um, and I'm I'm happy to answer questions. Colassi, your question um, you ask here in the chat, how soon before a family leaves from overseas would they have received the CO messaging? Overseas CO delivery varies. There are seven overseas resettlement support centers from um, Latin America all the way over to Malaysia and Thailand. And so just like they do in domestic CO, they also encounter very similar challenges um, to what we encounter or you encounter here domestically. As much as possible, we try. they try to deliver CO close to the departure date, but it does vary. Um, CO cannot be a reason for preventing an individual from coming to the US. So it's not mandatory overseas, but there is a high attendance rate, I believe, um, at least in the 90s in terms of adults who attend overseas CO but generally they try to deliver it as close at, uh, to departure as possible. So we are coming up on time um, and there's a lot to cover. So I hope you don't feel like leaving here um, overwhelmed. Um, that's not our intention. We will continue to be supporting you throughout this process. And I do just wanna again emphasize that CORE is not the monitoring and compliance arm of PRM or of the National Resettlement Agencies, but as a member of the leadership who's been working on this, we are very much aware that we wanna focus on um, uh, applying the revised COONIs in a way that best works for our refugees and not, and not with a focus on monitoring and compliance, but that we do know that these are gonna be, that these new revised ONIs are gonna be in the updated uh, 2024 fiscal year cooperative agreement. Um, and so as we move forward in working on this, we will be here to support you. We do want to have an up, uh, we do plan to have exchanges on digital technology and literacy in US laws later this summer as those were topics that were identified out of user testing uh, last summer. We are at time and I just wanna thank you all so, 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 so much. Um, apologies for all the information to cover and that we weren't able to get through everything. But I do want to just ask that you take five minutes to complete our post webinar survey and share your feedback. Let us know what you need. Let us know how we can help you. If you have any more questions, I'm happy to stay on the call here for a little bit longer um, before we depart today. But thank you guys so much um, for uh, all of your, your time and your attention today and for all the work that you do on behalf of refugees uh, across, across the globe.